Hello everybody, I'm SJM. Welcome back to DST. This is the World Exploration Part 2. Um, so I kind of ventured around and ran into the swamp here. Uh, this is the most dangerous place in the overworld if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, if you do know what you're doing, it's still a little bit dangerous and I've made it even more challenging by coming in here just before nightfall hit. Um, so the one thing that I do, we do want to collect while we're coming through the swamp are these reeds because we're going to need eight to get our uh, initial base set up going and we need those eight reeds to make a bird cage and specifically we need them to make two paper and each paper takes four reeds. Um, so I had to skip out on some of these first ones um, just because there's tentacles near them. So that's kind of the one thing you want to watch out for. Um, there was a tentacle close to this guy, but I walked past it and then came and back and got it while it was attacking Chester. Um, you can let Chester tank a few hits for you because he does recover health quite quickly, but you don't want to leave him in the line of fire for too long or with multiple tentacles swinging at them because he will die pretty quickly at that, uh, in that scenario. So we'll just come back on here and we can see that nighttime is about to hit. I've got a 75% torch, which should make us through the night, um, but it might not either. So I'm gonna kind of wait until the very last second before turning it on. And we may have to come back to the um, swamp to collect our reeds because we're coming through here at night uh, and we won't be able to see necessarily the tentacle bubbles like because there's where a tentacle is there will be little bubbles in the ground uh, that let us know whether it's safe or not and here we're already out of the swamp anyways so not a whole lot to talk about that either. So we'll just come back and the game pauses because I've got that pause going. Uh, so we'll be coming back through the swamp anyways because of this, the layout here. So we, the swamp will probably continue on over here in a, this pattern. So as we come up and we explore around here, we'll come back through the swamp anyways. So we'll have more opportunity to grab some more reeds um, at that time. So I'll just keep continuing on here and I'll bring you guys back uh, at the next talking point. Well, two seconds later, we hit that next talking point as I walked across this thing called the walrus camp. That is one of the things we definitely want to find um, in our, if not in our initial exploration of the world, but it'll be one of the things that we definitely want to find um, after, before we get into winter. Um, it's sort of a, a mini boss. It's not a proper giant boss, but it is definitely a challenging enemy um, that does have some valuable items that we want to get from um, for the winter time and in, in general as well, including um, arguably the most powerful item in the game. So yeah, uh, that was the brief talking point. We'll bring you back um, with the next one. All right, so we came across that first Mac Tusk hut up there that I talked about just a moment ago. And then I went around the rest of this biome here, which is the grasslands biome. And I came back through here and I came across a second one. In this situation where you've seen two Mac Tusks um, huts in one singular biome usually um, got some grass grassland or um, plains type biome. Grassland is the light green and the the yellow I call the grassland or sorry plains um, with some rocky um, turf here as well rocks and usually tall birds you'll 100% of the time have a third Mac Tusk hut in here. So we can look for it now so that we know where it is when we come back here for the winter time, um, because that can be dangerous walking into an area where there is another, where there is um, 
a Mac Tusk that you don't know about because if he ambushes you at the wrong moment, that could mean a death and especially in the winter time, that can be super painful. So maybe I just made a liar of myself, or maybe that third one is up this road a little bit more. Uh, can't hurt to go and check it out. Because like I said, it's good to know where they are, if they're going to be here or not. And if it's not here and just making a liar out of me, that's another thing altogether. But yeah, so there it is, as I had predicted uh, just in this sort of plains-ish biome. So yeah, at least they're far apart and they shouldn't be affecting. Well, they could, but um, it's just something that we'll need to take into account when we do our Mac Tusk hunting strategy um, during the winter time there. So as I come back through here, um, I forgot to top off my hunger last time at the night because I was worried about the swamp. So I will do it now because I'm going to be going back into the swamp. And we're hoping to get six more reeds before we exit the swamp here. Because this is actually going to be, oh no, this is going to go around quite a bit. So that I won't worry about it too much, but we'll uh, just keep our ears out because you can hear some of that grumbling or low sort of rumbling noise. That is indication that there is a tentacle nearby, as well as sometimes you can see the bubbling, which when I do find one, it was hiding behind that tree. <laughs> and as I just showed you right there, things can go from zero to real, real bad in a hurry in the swamp here. So you kind of always want to be going there. So I've got my eight reeds. I am not going to be stopping for any more because I'd like to get out of here before the nighttime hits again because I've only got 1% left on my torch which will be trouble if we and then I just managed to scoop up that free silk right there uh, mostly for demonstration purposes as well but I think with the size of this swamp we won't have too much trouble getting out of it um, before the nighttime hits So we want to stay away from these merm huts because if you get too close to them you will aggro the merms. It's not getting close to the merms itself, it's getting too close to their homes that uh, aggros them. Now, I thought it was going to be nice and quiet there for a second, but it wasn't, so... And there's that next desert that I was looking for. And it's getting real close to that night time now, but we're almost out, I can tell by the minimap. If I didn't have that minimap there, I'd definitely be making that uh, extra torch right quick. But as soon as we get Chester into the clear there from the tentacles, we'll make that torch. And now that our... Um, Sanity is down about halfway. This is about the time where I do stop for the night, make my first science machine, and do my first prototyping. So prototyping does regenerate your sanity, which is why I haven't worried about it at all so far. Um, you get 15 points of sanity for each um, item that you prototype. And there are going to be five things that we're going to prototype here on the first night. It will be a backpack, it will be a uh, cut stone, it will be boards, it will be the electrical doodad, and then the um, alchemy engine. 
machine. So we'll go back here. We're going to place down a campfire so that we can do our work through the night. And then we will also place down our science machine here, somewhere relatively close so that we can work through the night. And then we will, first things first, will be the backpack, which is in the survival tab. This will get us our eight extra um, inventory slots. And then I think that there is an option, and if we just hit pause there, we can, on the escape menu, you have to hit the toggle pause for it to be paused. You just have to remember to unpause it because escaping out of this menu, it will stay on pause. Um, but there are some settings. Now there's a setting somewhere that puts the backpack down at the bottom, sort of like what you see on the consoles. Um, but I, I, I'm used to it this way, so I've kind of left it there. If I find it uh, later on, I'll show you guys where it is. But uh, So now that we've got the backpack on, we are going to refine. And we're going to do, be doing cut stone, so we need at least four. So that means that we need at least 12 cut stone. And that little hand there grabbed our fire. I just let him have it because I'm not too worried about it. Uh, the next one will be boards. We're going to need four of these as well. So you definitely want to have at least 14 or 16 logs before you do this. So. 12 stone, 16 logs, you're going to need four gold nuggets as well, so you can make two electrical doodads. Then with all of those combined, we have the uh, things we need to make the alchemy engine, and I'm going to make this fancy one here, and then once again, I'm not placing it down right now, so I just right click and it will stay pre-built in my tab over here. It's just kind of the way I did the science machine the first time and the way I did my fire pit as well. And now you can see we were halfway down and we've now gone almost back up to full. So the second um, desert area has these round kind of cactuses and as well we'll have these magma pools with a giant in the middle, the dragonfly. So if you hadn't done the health adjust one, this dragonfly would have 30,000 hit points or something like that. So just one thing to keep in mind there. And that's usually like a raid type boss that everybody jumps in and, and kills at the same time. So the main thing we wanna find in the desert here are the tumbleweeds. I'm actually quite disappointed we haven't even seen one as yet, but the ones that were maybe, maybe were on this edge of the um, desert spawned while we were coming along here and have floated off somewhere else. And we may come across them somewhere else, uh, somewhere along the edges here, hopefully, uh, which is typically where the tumbleweeds tend to collect. So like I said, as we're opening up the tumbleweeds, we will be hoping that we get at least a gear and as well topped off on our sticks and our cut grass. Now a lot of these things we don't need, but we can wait until our inventory fills up and decide what we want to keep and what we want to put back down on the ground. So there we go. We got super lucky. It's, I don't know, it's, it's not a super high chance to get gears, but it's not too often that I don't get gears on my initial exploration either. And then when we do, then we just have to make that guest go back. So um, the other thing that we do when we come across these, the touchstone set piece with the pig heads is it is now time to make ourselves a hammer. Hey, let's grab this. I uh, didn't need to chop that tree, but whatever. Uh, and then with the hammer, I'm just going to put that there. 
We can hammer down these guys. This will give us extra sticks and coveted, coveted pigskins. Um, the other thing you can do is to get pigskins is you can hammer down uh, pig houses, but then that leaves pigs homeless, which is a good thing and not a good thing at the same time. So from each of those sets, we do get eight pigskins. Um, you can knock down, there should be two of them in your world as you go around. So you can knock down all of them and get all of the pigskins, or you can leave them for later because uh, if you knock those pig heads down during a full moon, you'll also get some nightmare fuel as well. If you know what that is, then you know how um, difficult or possibly difficult it can be, um, although it's really not difficult to get nightmare fuel. But, you know, if you can get a free extra resource just for waiting, why not, right? Uh, so the other thing we can touch on for sanity management here is uh, flowers. So remember I had found a flower petal in the tumbleweed that didn't give me any sanity when I picked it up, but if you pick a flower off of the ground that will give you five sanity. There's also a handy way to kind of build up um, to keep your sanity under control during the initial world exploration. I just, I wouldn't pick too many flowers if you think that's where you're actually going to be putting your main base in because you kind of want to have flowers around your main base so that they're spawning butterflies. So you notice I now have two butterfly wings from A killing that butterfly, which I'll go over with you quickly. Um, so if you hold control and you hit the attack button, which is by default F, I've got mine rebound to space because it's easier for me. Um, and then space is usually the collect button, but I've rebound, I've just switched them off. So F is my collect and space is my attack. Uh, but by default, F is your attack and space is your collect, but it's just really easy to hit control plus space for attacking um, either innocent or neutral mobs. So I was right beside that butterfly, I hit control and my attack button, and then I killed it. And it gave me the butterfly wings, and then the other one I got from the tumbleweed, which was super handy. Um, but these are the, arguably the best food in the game. Um, they don't fill you up very much, but they do heal for eight points of health for each one uh, that you eat. So if you've taken some incidental damage, say a tentacle clipped you, or you got hit by some of those killer bees coming through the killer bee biome, that's definitely um, the number one way to get back your health in the early stages. Later on, there'll be other things to do. As I mentioned before, with the birch nuts there being um, a part of a incredible recipe for healing but uh, yeah we'll go over that in a future episode so coming back through the little mini rock biome we can always see fun sights like that i want to pick that silk but that's getting into the little bit of into the danger zone i don't want the tall bird to mess with the tall bird right now so we will just leave well enough alone. Um, so one of the reasons I am collecting the petals is that um, not only does it give me five sanity to top off my sanity back to full for this initial exploration, um, but also if we collect 12 petals, we can make... Uh-oh, I walked onto a spider. <laughs> Where is it? Where is it? There's a petal crown somewhere. I don't... Pretty sure we don't have to prototype it. Hmm. Oh, there it is, right at the top. The garland. And this skill will give you, once you have 12 petals, it will give you a passive sanity increase as well. Although the nighttime um, and or the evening time and the night time overpowers that passive sanity buff and it'll only be active during the day. 
So even though we're coming through this second half of the um, desert at night, if we just stick close to the edge here, we'll definitely find some tumbleweeds. We've already got our gear, so that's the really good news there. And quick reflexes sometimes to grab those ones that are moving. And just between our mini map and the um, little bit of light there, we can watch the sort of edge of the edge of the screen there. So if I had wanted to, I could have used some of the extra durability on here to grab some of these guys. Oh, that's just ash, which we won't worry about, but a little bit of charcoal as an important resource for later. Oh, there we got a second gear even. So a pretty lucky um, small desert there uh, by all standards. So we really kind of didn't get to where we wanted to on the um, twigs and grass front, but we can always just grab stuff later. And now you see with how full my inventory is, why I kind of skip over some of these boons on uh, my initial pass through the world. It's because it will clog up your inventory even more. Uh, the first little bit of rain that we'll get through in the first few days is almost never nothing to worry about. I've had it in the single player game where it kind of actually rained for really, really heavy for like a full day and was a problem. But that's like a 0.0001% chance of happening. I, and I don't even know that it happens in Don't Starve Together anymore either. So looking at the minimap, this does seem like we have completed the complete circumnavigation because we started here and we went here and then went around the world that way. And now we can see the entirety of the map with the exception of the Moon Island, which we'll go over at some point when we get to um, the boating stuff. But that will be definitely far, far in the future because that is some definitely some advanced stuff there. And that's where we'll leave off this episode here because in the next episode we will get into the talking points of where to put our uh, main base. So once again, thumbs up if you enjoyed. Comment if you have any questions or want to point out something that I may have glossed over too quickly or missed entirely. Um, I appreciate you all and we will see you in the next one.